So today we are going to show you how to um, treat your grains that you're going to put in plastic buckets. So you're going to store in plastic buckets. These are some of our favorites to use because they are reusable since we rotate through our food storage. Um, we have a certain number of buckets and we know we need more when we empty the buckets. So recently, these are the buckets that we have emptied and we've cleaned them all up very well, let them air dry so that they're, they're perfect. Now remember when we do this, we're only gonna use food grade buckets and it can never have stored anything except for food. So we're gonna put grains in them that are 10% moisture or less and that's really important because if you're doing it for longer term storage, those are the only good candidates. Now, oxygen absorbers will not work in plastic buckets because there is not a true oxygen barrier. So you're gonna need to use dry ice, which is carbon dioxide, CO2. So this is what we're gonna do. You need, for a five gallon bucket, this is actually a six gallon. So we're gonna need a little bit more than this, but two to three ounces for a five gallon. So I think we will put somewhere between three and four in there. So Don, you wanna measure us a little piece? That is four ounces right there. Four ounces, okay. So, so we, this, when you look at this, it's actually fairly small. That's not very much dry ice. And what we want to do is actually wrap it because we don't want it to come in contact with the grain that we're going to put in here and burn it. Now, I'm going to put this on the bottom of the bucket, just like that. And Jonathan actually prefers a different way, and he'll show you that in just a minute. But so I put that in the bottom of the bucket. And now I have like 50 pounds of beans. These are just pinto beans. And I don't want to quite pull it all the way up to the top. So I've got my beans in here over my dry ice that's been wrapped and I am just going to put this lid on just like tap it on one side I want to make sure that it's not sealed at this point because I want the carbon or the dry ice is going to sublimate and it's heavier than air so it's going to going to push all of the air out of the bucket now Jonathan being an engineer has a different way that he prefers to do it so I will let him show you how he would prefer to do it Okay, and, and honestly, it probably doesn't make very much difference. If you look in the literature, it talks about doing it both ways. The extension service says to put it part way up in the bucket. Um, some resources say right on the bottom, some say on the top, and I think either one will work because the carbon dioxide is so heavy as compared to air, it wants to sink straight down and it will evacuate the air out. So, we will go ahead. I like to put it on the bottom. So, um, you know, as is the case in most prepping, there's a variety of ways to do it, and as long as we get the job done, that's what matters. This is a little more than four ounces, but we're just going to go ahead and set that in there. I, uh, I will have kind of put a little bit in there. The only concern, that, the only concern that I have with uh, with putting it right on the bottom is that you might get that plastic so cold that some of the air, the moisture in the air, will condensate against it and you'll have a little bit of moisture in your bucket. Um, it probably isn't going to make too much difference as long as we get the job done. So this is the way extension says to do it, is to put in three or four inches of, of uh, grain. I put my little paper there then my dry ice on it, another paper on top so that we keep the, the grains from being uh, burned against the uh, very cold dry ice. Then we fill it up and go through the same process that Tyden mentioned, and that is we put the lid on, but we don't put it on tight. Obviously, uh, dry ice bombs are illegal, and that's what you create if you uh, put that on real tight, you create a dry ice bomb. So, Again, we want, don't want it completely full, but, but you want to be able to get as much in there as possible. Now, one way you can check this is in a few minutes, we will, uh, we will just put a match right here to the side of this bucket. And if the carbon dioxide has filled that bucket and is spilling out, 
it's going to extinguish that match right off. So we'll just put that on, making sure we leave a gap here. It's in the process of evacuating that air. And uh, so we'll come back in just a few minutes and we'll see if we were successful. Okay. Now that we've got all our buckets full and our sublimation is taking place inside the buckets, we're going to let it do its work and we use the excess dry ice to make a nice batch of root beer for the family so that we can celebrate our accomplishment. That's an important part of, of doing these important things is making sure that we take time to celebrate. Cheers. So, it's been about three hours and we've given the dry ice time to sublimate to be able to take, turn from its frozen state into a gaseous state. And now what we're going to do is with a rubber mallet, it's going to recap these to make sure we have a real good tight seal. Now, if the lid sucking in slightly is a good sign, um, and that means that it's all working working well. But if it starts to um, suck in a lot and the sides start to, to come in, you're gonna wanna go ahead and break that seal and allow some of the air to escape. So, because that means that you didn't quite let it wait long enough. So, first step is to have a good quality food grade bucket that has never held anything except for food and to clean it out really well. Then you want to purchase a product that is very high quality. We want it to be 10% or less moisture for longer term food storage. And then we want to take the dry ice and wrap it in something so that it, when the grain touches it, or the beans touch it, it doesn't burn it. Put it in the, the bottom of the bucket, or if you want to do it John's way, three, in, three or four inches up, and then finish filling the grain. Just set that lid on and let it do its job. And then, once it's all done, you're going to come. just like that, and you've got some good longer term storage grain. When you open this bucket, the grain should be good and free from any type of insect infestation. Thanks, we appreciate you watching. Keep on prepping. Okay, hi again, uh, we are back. These buckets were all sealed up. Um, some of them you can see are actually kind of dimpled down just a little bit, which is fine. A couple of these, these two, were bulged up a little bit, so we've just, Bolt, burp them out just a little bit. Um, there's probably not much left in there to sublimate, but and it probably wouldn't be a problem just to leave them. But we've just uh, burped them just a little bit, let some of that out. Um, in doing a little uh, more research, we did find out that one pound of dry ice is equal to 8.3 cubic feet of CO2. So and this bucket here is only about 1.1 cubic feet. So you can see that there's plenty of dry ice, especially with all the material in there, all of our food in there. It doesn't take a whole lot of dry ice and putting in two or three ounces is plenty. So we encourage you to make sure that you're taking good care of your food stores. These are important and it will be uh, good food that we need to rely on in times to come. Thank you.